So let's study the differences between single stranded DNA and double stranded DNA. So let's underline each of these and let's start with the points. So the first point under single stranded DNA will be so SSDNA is usually stellate or star shaped. SS means single stranded and for double stranded DNA we have so double stranded DNA is linear or in a filamentous form. Now let's move on to the second point. So the second point under double stranded DNA is the total number of adenine. The total number of adenine will be equal to the total number of thymine. And similarly the total number of guanine will be equal to the total number of cytosine. And for single stranded DNA, for single stranded DNA, so for single stranded DNA no such relationship exists. This was under single stranded DNA. So let's move on to the third point. So the third point under single stranded DNA is the adenine thymine ratio will be approximately 0.77 and for double stranded DNA the adenine is to thymine ratio for double stranded DNA will be 1. Let's move on to the fourth point. So for single stranded DNA the G is to C ratio that is the guanine is to cytosine ratio is 1 is to 3 and for double stranded DNA. So for double stranded DNA the G is to C ratio is 1 that is the guanine is to cytosine ratio is 1 for double stranded DNA. Let's move on to the fifth point. So the single stranded DNA is less stable and for double stranded DNA so the double stranded DNA is more stable. Let's move on to the next point. So the sixth point under single stranded DNA says that single stranded DNA is highly susceptible to the action of formaldehyde. The amino groups of the bases of single stranded DNA readily react with the formaldehyde and for double stranded DNA. So double stranded DNA is resistant to the action of formaldehyde. Let's move on to the next point. So the seventh point under single stranded DNA is the SSDNA or the single stranded DNA behaves as a randomly coiled polymer and for double stranded DNA. So the double stranded DNA behaves as a rigid rod like structure. Double stranded DNA behaves as a rigid rod like structure. Let's move on to the next point. So the single stranded DNA is present in a very few viruses. One example is the Phi X174 and for the double stranded DNA. So the double stranded DNA is present in almost all organisms. Let's move on to the next point. So the ninth point under single stranded DNA is it does not follow the Chargaff's rule and for double stranded DNA it follows Chargaff's rule. Now let's move on to the last point that is. So for single stranded DNA the purine by pyrimidine ratio varies greatly and for double stranded DNA the purine by pyrimidine ratio will be 1. So these were the differences between single stranded DNA and double stranded DNA. So these were the points. So now let me show a diagram in order to give a clarity regarding these uh, double stranded and single stranded structures. So the top figure shows a single stranded DNA with only one strand present and the second one is the double stranded DNA with two strands present over here. Now let's show a, organ or a virus which is composed of the single stranded DNA. So this is the structure of a parvovirus and it is composed of a single stranded DNA. So these were the differences between a single stranded DNA and a double stranded DNA. Thank you.